What's up, everybody? I am Ghost Boy Colby, and if I sound a little uh, frustrated or like I've done this before, it's because I have. This is my third attempt trying to record this, and I'm just hoping everything is set up right. Um, the reason I'm having so much trouble trying to record this episode is because I switched as you can see it says director's commentary right there and uh, that's because I switched from the original Bioshocks 1 and 2 for PC to the Bioshocks 1 and 2 remastered uh, for Xbox One from Bioshock the Collection and overall this is good news because it means that the graphics will be a little bit better, there shouldn't be as many audio sync issues or uh, subtitle issues. Um, the, there shouldn't, it shouldn't be as buggy, really. I mean, it's the remastered version, so it should just be better. Um, but the advantage that recording this multiple times gave me, though, is that I finally figured out which corner to put my webcam in. Because I couldn't put it in the top left, that's where the health and Eve are. I couldn't put it in the bottom left, because obviously that's where the money is on the pause menu. And it's also where the ammo is in-game. And then uh, I couldn't put it in the bottom right, because that's where the atom counter is. So, luckily, me recording it this many times has taught me where to put my freaking webcam. But... Uh, aside from that, I'm just going to try and play through. Um, I cut the last attempt a little bit short. It was about 17-something minutes, so I'm going to try to play a little bit longer than that. Uh, I might even make this a 30-minute episode. We'll see. Uh, if I get to the point that I think I'm going to get to, I might stop there. Uh, I'm not going to say specifically what point but I'll let you know once I get there. So I'm just gonna <laughs> quit talking all this uh, technical blah 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 and uh, just get back to the game. Uh, so far where we are is uh, we were on a plane. We crashed over the mid-Atlantic and uh, we saw this lighthouse so it was the only place to go and uh, we swam there we went inside we go to the bottom of it like this basement area and there's a bathysphere we go into the bathysphere and it takes us to this underwater city and basically as soon as we get there we're like trapped and there's this woman who looks about like, the, well, not quite like that. She had like hooks for hands, but she attacks us. And uh, we find a radio, a shortwave radio. We pick it up. There's this guy talking to us, his name's Atlas. And he's basically leading us through this city, which is known as Rapture. And we saw this big guy in a, uh, in like a diving suit and he was like really really big it was actually one of those right there uh, and they have drills for hand or they have a drill for one of their hands and they're called big daddies uh, this one in particular is the bouncer and so uh, the one that we saw walked off and we don't really know where it went, uh, but it had a little girl with him. And so, uh, basically we're just doing what Atlas says. Uh, going around Rapture and seeing if we can eventually find our way out in one piece. That's pretty much where we are at this point. Uh, we got a special power ability it's called a plasmid and this one in particular is called Le electro bolt and it just lets us shock the crap out of our enemies and if you combine it with puddles of water like this 
you can get an insta kill. Like so. Uh oh. Uh, this part's pretty simple. I've played it before. Basically, really all you need to do is just stand around the puddle and shock it whenever people jump into it. If you do that, it should pretty much give you an insta-kill to all of them. Uh, there will be like maybe one or two people who sneak up on you outside of the... Out, outside of this little area where the puddle is, but it's not that bad. Uh, as you can see, I really only took that one hit. And, you know, I've said before, it's not necessarily... Or, well, I think I've said it before. I might not have, but... If I haven't, my goal in this game is not really to play it perfectly. I just want to play it well enough to beat it. <laughs> so... I know I'm not going to play it perfectly, and I even said before that I'm probably going to die at least once at some point. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. There's Andrew Ryan right there. He doesn't really like us. I don't really like him either, to be honest. And don't worry, by the way, these guys cannot break through. They'll just keep on banging and banging, and that uh, that dramatic music will just keep swelling and swelling, and I don't know, whatever it's called, crescendoing, something like that. But yeah, so you're not in ac any actual danger in that section. Uh, I know because from experience I have stood there for about like two minutes waiting for them to break through and they don't <laughs> so yeah now we're going to the medical pavilion I'm assuming because it's literally the only way we can go because Atlas said so and we have to trust him he knows more about this place than we do. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, sometimes it's so inconvenient that they make the buttons the same thing for multiple things. Okay, so this is the first hack. And uh, it's the easiest difficulty. And basically all you do is just uncover these tiles. You don't have to uncover every single one. But I did just for an example and you switch these pipes around to get from point A over here to point B and later on there are gonna be uh, tiles that make that much more difficult uh, I'm just taking a really roundabout way so I have time to explain but yeah these I, I prefer the hacking system in Bioshock 2 but I'm not really gonna give any details about it uh, I'm trying to hold back spoilers because I know I'm, I'm pretty bad about it and actually it turns out I don't have enough straight uh, vertical pipes to get to that point um, let's see I can switch this out okay easy fix but yeah, that was the first hack, and then obviously once you've got them all lined up like that, you can just, uh, you can simply, uh, you can simply press Y, or if you're playing on PlayStation Triangle, and uh, speed it up so that the hack gets done with quicker and you don't have to wait for the liquid to flow when you know you already finished. Uh, I'm being a little quieter now just because I'm trying to focus on this particular hack But it's another 
rather easy difficulty one. It's only a little bit more difficult than the last one, even though there are a lot more tiles. So there we go. Uh, whenever you hack these security bots, they become your little buddies and just follow you around and shoot people that try to kill you. And then uh, if you hack these vending machines, uh, whatever is for sale in the vending machines is a little bit cheaper. And I'm not going to worry about really buying anything besides some EVE hypos. Um, maybe I shouldn't have bought so many because now I'm just about broke. But oh well, I use them anyways, so it's not like it was a waste. There's Diane again. I told you that wouldn't be the last we heard from her. Sorry, I'm not saying a whole lot. Uh, for one thing, I was trying not to talk over the audio diary. And for another thing... Uh, I'm not really sure what to say. I think I kind of commentaried myself out on the last two attempts of recording this. I'm sorry. So, I know I just got quiet again after already apologizing for being quiet, but that's because I was trying not to talk over the audio diary. If you want to use the emergency access, you'll be needing Dr. Stoyman's key. He's the one that runs this place. But I don't expect him to hand it yet. That's me, I'll get you with kindness. God. Stoyman is that kind, frankly. Oh, your turret can shoot you, by the way. And you can shoot it. And uh, once they break, they break and I just accidentally deactivated it because it flew past and I pressed the A button at the exact right moment that can happen too and it's pretty irritating although I don't blame them really for reusing the A button for multiple situations it's just sometimes it's a little inconvenient Now, if I'm being a little quiet, it's because my stomach hurts. <laughs> I know that's my problem and not yours, but I'm just saying. Uh-oh. Jeez. Thank goodness for the turret. I'm pretty sure I would have died at that part if I didn't have the turret. Not because I don't have enough, you know, first aid kits or anything. It's just because I probably wouldn't have gotten to heal myself in time. Lady, if your shrieks of heartbreak are any indication, I probably don't want to look at you. I'm just saying, you know, sounds a little cruel, but I'm just speaking the truth. Uh, this is where I stopped before, but 
I figured out when I was watching the footage that I stopped a little prematurely, so, you know, I'm going to keep going until I get to a certain part. I think I might end up making this video 30 minutes or so. Uh, damn it! Okay, so... Yeah, if a turret shoots you like that, or one of these stationary turrets shoots you like that, your security bot will go after it. And, uh, you... Ideally, you want to get to it and hack it before that happens, but you will definitely risk getting shot by your turret in or by your uh, security bot in the crossfire So uh, yeah Just watch out Pretty much if you can hack one of these, you know, turrets, whether it's a stationary turret or a security bot, you want to do it. You're not going to be able to hack all of them necessarily, but... Uh-oh. Damn it! See, sometimes it's really difficult. Because they put them in spots like that where they're hard to get to. And then you can't get to it before your turret kills it. I know I keep saying turret. I I basically refer to the stationary turrets and the security bots by the same name. So, if I say turret, I'm probably talking about either one of those. Just, you know, pay attention to the context. I'll try and correct myself for the sake of not confusing y'all, but, you know, these things happen. People mix words up. Stop! <laughs> Are you done? Gosh. Play nice, y'all, okay? Get along. You're on the same team. Let's see, uh, ooh. And then you can hack these. Uh, in Bioshock 2, if you hack them, they give you a first aid kit. But, or well, that's if you get a certain bonus. But, uh, re regardless of whether or not you get the bonus, if you hack them, you make it so that the enemies can no longer use them because whenever you're fighting, the enemies can use these, they can heal themselves, and it gets a little bit annoying if they just keep going back and healing themselves and you can't quite get to them or the the first aid station or whatever it is. But uh, if you hack it, a poison gas will spray out at them and kill them. So yeah, you want to hack these. Uh, looks like they don't give you first aid kits in this game. But yeah, they do in Bioshock 2. Did you see that? <laughs> that body did a, a little bit of a, a bit of a backflip or something. Uh oh. I took the cigarettes. I'm a bad kid. But at least I'm cool. Uh, who am I kidding? Let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of audio audio diaries around here. that was gonna happen and yet it still got me 
Alright, after the next use, I'm gonna have to reload. Um, let's see. I might actually not get to the point that I'm thinking of. Okay, that was bad. Okay, so yeah, you definitely want to hack these. Normally, if the light is red and you get caught in the spotlight, uh, that means that an alarm is about to go off and you have to get out of the light or else that alarm will activate. And once that alarm activates, there will be a bunch of security bots sent your way. Their light or their uh, little flashing lights or whatever will be red, and that's how you know that they're trying to kill you. You can hack them, and uh, it's pretty risky, but you can you know shock them as they're flying at you, and then hack them that way. And then once you do, if you're successful they the lights will turn green and they will be on your side um if you hack the uh cameras like this uh whenever an enemy is caught in the spotlight they, they will trigger the alarm and then the security bots that come after them will have yellow lights so that means they're neutral towards you. They won't shoot you, but they won't follow you and protect you either. So you can also hack those and turn them green so that they're on your side. Um, yeah. I just figured I might as well explain that. Uh, we'll see it later on. I feel like it's probably going to happen at some point. But I just thought I should give you a heads up. That's pretty much the basics of how the security cameras and the security bots work. This is our first tonic. Uh, you have picked up your first physical tonic. Physical tonics make you stronger or more powerful. They're equipped separately from plasmids and other types of tonics. So there are four types of tonics, uh, I don't remember all of them, but this one is a physical tonic. And it should help us with hacking. Every time you hack something, you gain a little health in EVE. That's decent. You know, because I try to hack everything that I can. I don't always succeed. I'm not the best hacker. But I try. Uh, if you fail a hack, you can uh, actually you can lose health. Uh, it will actually damage you a little bit if you fail a hack So yeah, you want to try your best not to And eventually they're gonna have little uh, Tiles or whatever little pipes that if the blue liquid or whatever it is flows into it uh, You will trigger an alarm or you'll trigger like a little explosion that harms you more than you would have been harmed for just normally failing the hack. So there are going to be a bunch of little annoyances that we come across in the hacks later on. We're not at that point yet, but I don't think it'll be too much longer before we are. Like I said, when it comes to these uh, basic gameplay mechanics, I'm trying to keep spoilers out of it. In terms of plot details, I'm just telling you what is eventually going to happen in terms of gameplay. Now we finally have Incinerate. This is the plasmid that was advertised at the beginning of Andrew Ryan's little introduction movie when we first got into the bathosphere and started descending down into, into uh, Rapture. Fire at your fingertips. Aww. <laughs> that means my security bot just died. We died in the fire. It's okay. I've normally lost the uh, the security bot before this point, anyways. I find it very unlikely that you could keep one 
single uh, security bot for the entire game. I, I'm pretty sure that's impossible. I have no idea how you do that. Because in this game, there's not one of the tonics that exist in the second game, or at least in the second game's DLC. Uh, it's... I don't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's called Repairman. Where whenever your turrets or anything that you've hacked, if it starts taking damage, you can repair it. And heal it. And that comes extremely in handy in the, in the second game's DLC. Because it's very technology based. Like, there's a lot of hacking. It makes it like a central focus. And I actually love that DLC. It's called Minerva's Den, and I believe it's one of my favorite story expansions for any game. Of course, Burial at Sea for Bioshock, Sim Bioshock Infinite is, you know, fantastic, but I just really love Minerva's Den. I'm not sure which way to go. This way? I guess I might as well follow the friggin' arrow, huh? Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get to the point that I was thinking of before. Well, I might. I don't know. Oh, no, I'm definitely not gonna. Yeah, that's uh, Dr. Steinman. We'll see him later. Ooh, I'm not gonna hack that. It sucks that the subtitles go away whenever you start a hack, but the audio continues going. That's why I wasn't saying anything, so that I could let you hear uh, Atlas best you could. And I was also trying to focus on doing this hack because there are a lot of pieces. There we go. Ah. What's the matter, Frank? Oh, he's dead. Yeah, we can't get through there right now. Uh, there's no way to get rid of the rubble in front of that doorway. So we'll be back. But we have to get another plasmid first. And uh, I think I'm actually going to leave off here. Uh, I'm not actually that close to the point that I thought I was going to be at before I stopped. But uh, we'll worry about that next time. And so hopefully I've got everything worked out. Uh, this episode should finally be the last take that I do. Um, yeah, so in the next one, we should make it to Dr. Steinman. <laughs> uh, I don't see that as a spoiler because it's kind of obvious that he's the one we're going after anyways. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, hopefully I've got everything worked out. And then uh, I'm also going to be starting another series alongside this one. I haven't necessarily decided what game it's going to be. But I do know this isn't going to be the only series I do until the end of it. Um, keep in mind that whatever series I do start next, or alongside this one I mean, is not going to be another Bioshock game because I'm going to be all the Bioshock games and their DLCs in order. Um, Bioshock 1 doesn't have any story-based DLC, so I don't count those. I'll play those eventually, maybe, for a video, but I'm not going to... Or maybe a couple videos, but I'm not going to focus on them. At Like, once I beat Bioshock 1, I'm doing Bioshock 2. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I love that game so much, I'm gonna play it. But not until I beat this one. And, um, yeah, so, you know, you're, you're pretty much just gonna have to wait and see what series I do next. 
alongside this one. But um, yeah, whatever it is, I hope you'll like it. Uh, my goal for this channel really is to have as wide a range and reach as possible. Because uh, if you just stick to really niche games, you know, you, you go nowhere really fast. Um, it's cool to just stick to stuff you like, sure, but you got to be able to branch out at some point. You know, maybe a few years after you've developed your taste, really, then you can start branching out. I, I think that's what you should do, whether it's music, video games, or movies, no matter what it is. Just try to be well-rounded with the media that you're familiar with. So, yeah, that's what I think. The, those are my little two cents. But, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, hopefully this video isn't too much longer than I think it should be. I think it should be about the right length, but I'll just have to wait and see. If it's not, no big deal. Um, really, the only thing it affects is uploading and processing time, but that's for me to worry about and not you. Uh, so I don't need to make it your problem. Uh, until the next episode, peace.